Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter, Consultant Audiologist and Director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration of the wax scope. Now, I'm actually using the iClearscope endoscope um, to take the pre-procedure video here. And you can see that they've got bilateral earwax and they've got very, very hairy ears. So uh, this is a good challenge for the wax scope. And we're just starting off in the left ear. So they've got, as I said, extremely hairy ears, very narrow ear canals as well. And this wax, it's like a boulder, it's really solid, it's embedded, and you can see it's loads of matted hairs there. They almost look like straws. So I just went in with the Zolna Suction Pro, but very early on I realised this is not going to come out with suction. And uh, I'm going to think use a hook almost straight away, which we'll see. So yeah, I'm just using the Satan Bart's ear hook, I'm just inserting it, and I'm trying to just go to higher up, you can see I'm just lifting tilting the wax scope upwards. I'm trying to embed the tip of the hook into the core of this wax and then slowly bring it forward. But it's really tough. Um, as I said, it was almost like a boulder in texture. So, but we did get there in the end. Um, so again, just retracting here. I'm using a 4.25 millimeter specular here. So there are those hairs that we uh, could see. So as I said, they got very hairy in. We have to deal with that um, when we remove earwax as clinical ear care specialists. So, it can be challenging at times. Uh, in the worst case scenarios, I've had to pluck some hairs out, but we didn't have to do that here. In the specular itself, it does help to push some of the hairs away. Um, so I just went back in with the uh, suction probe here because this boulder of wax was a bit deeper in, and whenever the wax is deeper in, I always see if we can remove it, which is in suction, because uh, the inner two thirds of the ear canal uh, is a sensitive region of the ear. It's a thin layer of skin less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness that directly lines and coats the bony part of the ear canal. So there's no fatty tissue or cartilage to buffer the ear canal. So if you make contact with the bony part, uh, it can be quite uncomfortable and you're much more likely to make contact with the bony part of the ear canal when you use hooks and corrects and jobs and horns and forceps as opposed to suction. But I've had to go back in with the hook here and you can see I've embedded it into the core again and uh, going to the roof and just trying to roll this out so you can see that's the entrance again all those hairs that the patient's got so we've got four different specular sizes uh, this is the 4.25 millimeter this is the one that I'd probably be using the most um, so we got the core of the occlusion out we can see there's still quite a bit of wax and this is right up against the eardrum so at this stage we're going to have to use the sucker so Again, just got it in focus, getting the sucker in. Uh, we're just going to make contact here. And you see, there's a lot of keratin, the white stuff there, it's dead skin that's adhered itself and enveloped itself around the wax. And it's also connected to uh, the ear canal. So just some residual debris there. Just going to get it in focus. You can see we've just adjusted it on the app. Crystal clear of view. The patient had been using a bit of drops in this ear. So although it didn't really soften the, the lateral part of the wax, it some of the drops did settle deep in the ear. It must have penetrated through or drizzled through the gaps in the wax. Very narrow eardrum, but we can, uh, ear canal, sorry, but you can see the eardrum there. Slightly vascularis, slightly retracted, but otherwise okay. You see, you got a nice, you can see the capillaries and blood vessels there. So the hair's slightly there, but we can still mitigate that. I don't know, that last view gave you an idea of how narrow the ear was. So this is there right in. On this side, the wax was a lot dry. They hadn't been using any drops here, but... The methodology would be the same. Uh, I'm going to have to use a hook straight away. So I'm just going to go again to the roof of the ear canal. Then I'm rotating the hook. I'm trying to get the tip into the core where I am now and slowly come forwards. Uh, the right side, although they reported the left ear being the worst, it was the right ear that was um, had a far more significant amount of wax. It was a bit more challenging to remove. This ear was slightly more narrow as well, slightly more hairy. So again, just trying to dilate the ear canal. That's where the specular for the wax gate really does help. Um, so the flagship product is our iClearscope endoscope. And with an endoscope, you would have to dilate and stretch and straighten the ear using the distal end of, this, of the endoscope. And you would be holding that in your non-dominant hand whilst your dominant hand will be holding the instrument. So with this, in this case, I'll be inserting the endoscope into the ear where I am now, stretching it to the left. And whilst I'm dilating the ear open with the endoscope, um, I will be able to insert the instrument. Without that, without stretching the ear open with the endoscope, we wouldn't be able to dilate the ear or straighten it or insert the instrument. 
Um, and it can be quite a typical, difficult thing to do, uh, especially for people that are new to erect removal. Once you've mastered that skill of an endoscope, there's nothing that really can compete in terms of optics, but it can be a bit more tricky. So you can see there, there's a bit of blistering at the bottom. So when you remove um, dry wax like this, which is enveloped in skin, as you remove some of the wax, the skin detaches itself from the canal wall and it can cause a bit of a blister and sometimes even mild bleeding, but it's very minor there. And you see it by the end of the procedure, that's completely stopped. And you can see the skin there where we're relifting it. It's still a bit more skin on top. So I just went, again, similar to the patient's left ear. Um, this is a bit deeper, so I initially tried just to use uh, sucker. Um, so I'm using a Zonda suction probe. I just thought, let me lubricate this a bit. So I just put a bit of oil, but this is really large. I, I could probably continue with the suction for an hour or so using dry so this wasn't going to come out with, with suction. And uh, this is where it's important as a clinical ear care specialist that you are proficient with all ENT micro instruments remove wax because the alternative is, is that this patient would have to go away, use drops for a week and then come back. So it's very important that you are able to remove wax or even if not remove, but at least assist you. Sometimes we use these instruments to facilitate suction. And with the wax scope, it's compatible with all ENT micro instruments. As you can see, uh, I'm just I'm just persevering a bit with the sucker, but I've realized it's not, it's just not going to come any further. So again, just dial it in the ear, going to go up and I'm going to insert the ear hook. I'm just getting it in focus as much as we can. You can see there, you can see the top of the wax. So the hook goes in and I've just got to manipulate it. I'm just gliding it horizontally at the roof of the ear canal. I'm in and behind and I'm going to embed the tip into the wax and slowly bring it forward. And it's just got trapped near the entrance now. Um, I've got another great video coming tomorrow with the wax coat where I use the Jobson horn to remove wax and you will, you'll just be blown away by the optics. And um, the patient had a severely retracted eardrum and it wrapped itself around the incus, the long process of the incus. And the incus is very prominent in view as a result. So I'll be uploading that tomorrow, hopefully. So we're nearly there. I'm just going to squeeze this through now. This plug, if you watch till the end, you'll just see how large this plug is. And it was larger than the entrance. We had to really force this through. Again, I'm just dilating the ear. So this is a really good test for the wax scope because it's probably one of the more challenging cases that you'll get. A narrow ear, hairy ear, really impacted wax that wouldn't come out with suction. Uh, this is the large plug and you'll see the end video of just how large it was. So again, it's going to dilate the ear and straighten it now. So I'm going to come back the other way. You can see there's a bit of dead skin, very medial. I've just got that in focus. Now the patient has got a bit of um, superficial otitis extens, it's a bit of eczema psoriasis. You can see the ear canal's a bit red. So I recommended some acetic acid spray over the counter. So let's have a look at the eardrum now. So we can see all the capillaries there, the blood vessels, the eardrum. Again, it's intact, slightly vascularis. So we mean that when we say that's a bit red and that's presumably because the wax was impacted right up against the eardrum. But again, slight retraction, but otherwise nice and healthy, happy client. So you can see that big lump of wax just to the left of how huge it is. And you've got an ear hook there in the, in the midst of it all as, um, uh, as a comparison and to give some perspective. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you are interested in the wax gate, please email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you.